Welcome back everyone. So in the last video, we managed to install Windows Longhorn build 4074 in its entirety inside of this virtual machine. Now, I actually need to admit something to you. Um, in, after the previous video, I actually started re recording the second part, which was supposed to be this video. But I ran into some issues, and some more issues after that. And... Along the way, I managed to accidentally stop the recording when I tried to reset the virtual machine. Because Control r not only does it reset the... Is it the same uh, key combination to reset this? It was also the same key combination to stop the recording. So I had to completely scrap that footage. And uh, there was also the fact that I started experimenting with some stuff dealing with networking. Seeing if I could get that to work. Because for some reason, networking is kind of weird here. Like... What I had to do was, uh, when I told you to, uh, and I'm actually going to make a correction here to the previous video. Remember when I told you to do XP mode? Yeah, you were supposed to set it to XP, but there was one last thing I left out, and I didn't notice it until after. See where it says PCNet Fast? When you first set up the virtual machine, change where it says PCNet Fast to Pro 1000 MT Desktop. And you have to go through this. You can't exactly do it when through the new virtual machine menu. But... Beyond that, that's about it to get the network working. Just set it to the uh, Pro Empty Desktop and the drivers will work automatically. It's because Microsoft was trying to get rid of those old legacy drivers for the PC Net fast. But it's no matter. VirtualBox has it and the thing will work. Now, about that problem. You click on Start, you click on Run, you type in Command Prompt, and here's the Command Prompt. We're going to minimize the, task, uh, the sidebar. You type in PingGoogle.com. We got an IPv6 address, and now we're getting general failure. Turns out that this act, this issue isn't really as scary. I'll get onto this later on in the video when we get to the uh, tweaking portion of it. But for now, though, as you can see here, we get general failure, general failure, general failure. Don't worry. The internet actually works here, but we can't exactly use this. And for some reason, yeah, Internet Explorer doesn't work. But, now that's kind of getting a little bit off topic from right now. For now, this part of the video is we're going to go ahead and install the guest editions. So, for right now, you go here, you go to devices, you click insert guest editions disk. And, uh, actually I had it inserted into the drive, funny enough. Let me go ahead and do that. You go to devices, insert guest editions, and it should autoplay. And here it is. Now, um, because of, uh... Because of uh, certain technicalities, you actually have to set this up into Windows XP mode. So, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, cancel these setup things, and I'll just show you how to do that. Now, uh, just FYI, I, because of a few scrap recordings, I actually forgot to set it back to the normal compatibility setting, so I'm just going to have to show you step by step on how to actually get that. So you go to your C drive, you open it up, here's your guest editions here, where it says x86, because this is the x86 version of Longhorn. Right click here, go to properties. Now, for some odd reason, you see this separate menu here? This separate menu did not actually exist in later or earlier versions of Windows. It was just for this one. I think it has something to do with WinFS, I'm not sure, just a theory. But, um, to actually set the compatibility settings, you actually had to click here where it says other properties, then click compatibility. Now, I've already set it to run in compatibility mode for Windows XP, but when you first get here, it's going to say Windows 95. So you click the checkbox, set it to XP, then you click OK. And you click OK. And so now, you go ahead and run the guest editions. The guest editions are editions that enhance the virtual machine experience. So, like, it makes it makes the operating system more integrated with the virtual machine. It's a set of drivers, essentially. And, well, it allows better mouse integration without doing that number, and then it allows you to go ahead and size this up, and the important part that really is to get files onto here would be to enable shared folders as well. So let's get started. You click Next, Next, and uh, here's another thing. See where it says Direct 3D Support? That won't work. You have to be running in Safe Mode, and Safe Mode on Windows Longhorn 4074 is incredibly broken. It won't let you go past the, uh, the, this is safe mode. Are you sure you want to be running in safe mode? You click desktop or, uh, you click yes or no. It'll just keep bringing you up that box. It won't get you to explore at all. And 
I've actually tried my little task manager workaround, and well, the compatibility mode doesn't work in in safe mode, so you're pretty much screwed out of that. So th there's a way around this, but it's it's kind of more technical. I'll get into that later, but for now we'll just install it like this. And it's installing, and it's going to tell you this with the whole security alert because it doesn't trust these drivers because, well, yeah, Microsoft kind of stopped supporting Longhorn, but it doesn't matter. You just click install now. I'm going to show it to you a couple of times, but don't worry about it. Just got to wait for these guest editions to show up. Now, about the compatibility thing, we're going to have to do that again later on, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Install now. Yep, the long process of installing the guest editions. This is fun. Install now. And hey, we finished. So we can go ahead and reboot now, man, and reboot later. We're going to go ahead and reboot now, so finish. And it's doing stuff, and it's logging off. What do you guys think of me announcing everything? Like, is it annoying? Is it okay? Because I like announcing what everything's doing. <laughs> but just let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing this or not. Or don't comment at all. Your choice. Windows is now shutting down. This is actually a really cool thing with, with like the Windows flag over a black background. Oh, hey, look. It's a boot up screen. Congratulations. All right, so now that we're in, <laughs> look at the look at the notification history. It's all crazy. Stay current with automatic updates, a few other things. But anyway, now as you've noticed, there is no virtual box thing here yet. And actually, we're gonna go ahead and wait a little bit till these key till the uh, the the keys show up here, the little uh, activation keys, because uh, trying to, it, according to that scrapped recording, if I were to try to do anything now, it's going to uh, it's going to glitch out. I don't know what it's doing in the background to make it take so long, but I think it's actually just loading up some stuff like WinFS and I like FS Agent here. And look, the VBox service is running in the background, so that's a good sign. WinFPM, WinFS, RSFX service, Fontcast service, Windows Event. Now, these are all beta beta services. They don't exactly exist in Vista or Seven or anything. So I guess for now, while we wait, we can go ahead and click run, type in soul, we can play a bit of solitaire. Yep, it plays solitaire. It's a pretty good thing. Yes, I know solitaire isn't exactly the best kind of game, but uh, it, it, it works so much. That doesn't go anywhere. It just shows you that, that it actually functions as an operating system like you'd expect it would. By the way, I kind of suck at Solitaire, but, eh, I'm still getting it. Blink. Ten. Check. The reason why we're playing Solitaire right now is because we're waiting for that whole keys to show up. Microsoft by West Cherry. You know, it's good thing that Longhorn didn't exactly have any ads for their Solitaire. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Windows 10. And hey, look, the keys showed up. So I guess we can stop playing Solitaire now. We can actually get started with the rest of it. We go to here, go to computer. You click here. I'm going to go ahead and bypass the C drive and just go straight to program files. And yeah, keep this in mind. It's When you go to the program files, it's going to show you these files are hidden. So you click here. Now you double click on Oracle because Oracle VM VirtualBox, VirtualBox Guest Editions. And here's the VBox tray icon. I don't know why this one has control over everything, but it does. So we'll set the compatibility mode for this one just the same way you did it on the CD ROM. And there is another thing you have to do because this isn't going to start up automatically for some odd reason. So we're going to properties that. Oh, wait, not properties. Great shortcut. Now I know there are better ways to actually do this, but this is one of the more simpler ways. You set up the VBox tray shortcut. You go to com 
you go to computer, actually no wait, not computer. You right click on the start button to be able to put it into the uh, startup thing, it's startup folder in the start menu. So, this folder right here. Actually wait, do I even have to open it up? I think I could just drag this in there. And hey, there it is, in startup. And so after you put that into the startup folder, click it. And here's the VBox tray. Now that that's enabled, watch this. We've now successfully adjusted the screen resolution. Now, since we're recording at, what is it, 1280 by 720, we're going to go ahead and set our resolution to that. And um, I'm going to have to adjust the recording, so I'm going to go ahead and and uh, pause the recording here and restart in a in a little bit once I have more things set up. Okay, so I'll be right back. Oh, and by the way, the screen recorder that I'm using here is Simple Screen Recorder, just in case you were wondering. All right, so I'm back, and as you can see, this entire thing has been taken up. So now we actually have ourselves the full video mode, and ah, darn, you won't be able to see Aya anymore. Oh well, that's a Toho character. Um, I'll get more on to Toho eventually, but for now, just keep it in mind there's this Japanese video game series called Toho Project, but m many of us uh, Americans call it Toho or something like that, or Tuhu, if you want to go that route, but that's off topic. Anyway, now that we've got the guest edition set up, we'll close out of it. And, uh, it too who thing is a meme, by the way. But, or at least, is it a meme? I don't know. You inform me in the comments. There are some people who are watching those videos. But, um, whatever the case is, we've got a few things we need to go ahead and fix. And a few things to add. Um, first things to fix. See this clock here? Um, it's not 1.07 a.m., it's actually 3 a.m. So, we'll have to go fix the time zone. I'm in central time, by the way. Switch to classic view, find the date and time setting, should be calendar looking thing. There it is. Date and time. That's a really squashed clock. I've never seen a clock that squashed. But, eh. We're gonna go ahead and set the time zone to central time. And hey look, we fixed the clock. Oh, see this here little thing here? This is another feature that I like that never really quite made it. It, it actually has like different pictures for each month. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, there should be one here. I think this one here is like one of the desktop backgrounds they had for other Longhorn versions, but I'm not entirely sure. Whatever the case is, you can see a mix of uh, XP style icons and Vista style icons. So now that we've fixed the clock, there is another thing we need to fix. And it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Microsoft have stopped support for Windows Longhorn because, well, they never really had very much support for this one. It was because this is a pre-reset build. They, they, this thing has been unsupported since 2004. So, activation, it probably won't work. I just double-clicked it to see what it would do. And it looks just like Windows XP's activation. Hmm... Remind me to like the yes, it likes activate. Let's see, actually, let's just see what it does. I'm actually curious. Register with Microsoft? No, just activate Windows. Checking for connectivity. It might not work because IPv6 might be broken. It's actually looking for IPv6 addresses. Or it could just be all like Microsoft says no. Or something. Or it just won't work. That's good enough for me. I don't really care about this anyway. It did something, didn't it? Oh well, it's already too late now. It wasn't going to work anyway, so... Ah, dang it. Well, we'll get back onto that. Or maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. So, essentially, we now got this here. So, the first thing we actually need to... So... Okay, let me get my thoughts together. Basically, to get rid of that... To get rid of that weird activation thing, get the full 180-day evaluation instead of just 60 days... We're going to have to replace this file called winlogon.exe, which actually controls the activation thing. And um, after, after the activation period is over, it's not going to let you log back in. So that's why 
when logon.exe is uh, is doing that kind of stuff instead of anything else because it's kind of essential to the system. So we'll go ahead and find when logon.exe right should be right over here. Here it is. There are two things that says when logon and when login. The real one we're looking for is when logon. Actually, let me go check that. Is it when logon? Yes, it is when logon. Okay, so we can't exactly swap it out right now, but what we can do is we will just go ahead and grab the win logon file from my shared folder. So let's go ahead and set up a shared folder. Machine folders, transient folders. And type in slash media slash. And well, when it comes to shared folders, it just depends on your system setup. Whatever you put your files at, you can just go ahead and put it here. Auto mount and make permanent. Okay, there we go. Now, since we set it to auto mount, we're going to go ahead and restart this anyway just to make our lives easier. But essentially, what shared folders do is it just allows you to be able to access your folders from within from within the virtual machine. Which is all fine and dandy. Because, well, we kind of do need to get files off of it into here. But no matter. We'll just go ahead and wait for Windows to actually do its Windows things. I've always wondered why the heck they got rid of that uh, old Windows XP flag. Because I because the Vista one look, looks a bit weird. But, eh. Maybe weird, maybe not weird. And now we're loading up. And as you can see here, the uh, VBox tray icon came up automatically, so that's actually a very good sign. Now, let's see if the share folder mounted. I think it should have. But I don't know yet. Oh, right, I forgot to show up. Ah, yes, there it is. Um, I forgot to wait for the keys to show up, but I'm impatient. But, if I'm correct, I think I could be able to double-click on this one without it all lagging out. But at the same time, though, I don't want to risk it. Eh. I say we wait for the keys to show up as much as that's going to take a while. But no matter, we got time. Actually, uh, yeah, we got time. We go to all programs. Let's see what we can run this time. Ah, yes, pinball. It's amazing how they got rid of this in Vista, too. But yet they kept it in Longhorn. At least at this stage of Longhorn's development. Oh yeah, you might not be hearing any audio. Um, for some reason on Linux, and I don't know if this is a Linux only thing, but on Linux, uh, or for some reason in VirtualBox, the audio and Longhorn don't seem to get along very well, so it sounds so choppy. It sounds like choppy audio, which isn't a very good thing. So, that's why I intentionally left sound off. Oh, hey, a hyperspace bonus. Ah, there are the keys. It's asking for 60 days left for activation. Hmm. Ah, we'll just let it drop. There we go. So, now that we've got the keys loaded, which these pesky keys are pesky, we're going to go ahead and double-click on data on for VBOX. Now, actually, once we go ahead and do this, we won't actually be able to see when the keys load so that so we won't be able to know when we're done so we're just gonna go with it after this point in time but for right now we got the keys here and we got the stuff and hey look another feature that actually made it into vista little 3d previews for everything but anyway to get to our files here we're gonna go ahead and open up where is it 
we're gonna go ahead and open up a special folder but I can't seem to find the folder huh where's the folder uh, give me one second this is a little confusing. Oh, it's on a useful files. So okay. Sorry about that. I was trying to figure out what the heck things were. So here we are. 4074 IDX02. Firefox setup and some patch thing I've heard about. I have not tested this yet, so you won't be able to hear from it until later on once I do more tests. But for right now, we're looking for win login. Win log on. There we go. We're going to go ahead and drag this to the desktop and. What happened to the taskbar? Ah, there it is, okay. And yeah, this right here is a modified version of Windows Logon, of Win Logon, that which allows us to be able to get to get rid of that whole activation thing and actually get get on with everything. So to be able to install the uh, the activation fix, you have to, you can't do it from within log when within Longhorn because it's gonna be like what the f are you doing you can't delete that because it's in memory or something like that it's still running so the way around that is to use something called linux mint 17.3 matei edition or you could use any linux distribution you want i just downloaded that off the internet so we insert the drive for linux mint matei and then we're going to go ahead and restart the virtual machine and we wait for the Windows services again yeah there are a bunch more services inside of Longhorn which I guess kinda made it a little bit more bloated than XP I can see why Microsoft killed the project but I mean I guess they could have also optimized that later on if they had continued with the Longhorn project mm. It's up in the air what could have happened if Microsoft actually didn't reset everything in terms of code. Oh, right. So you might be seeing here, wait, why is it not doing anything? Here's the thing. It has to do with the fact that I set it to XP mode again. Uh, Linux Mint requires these things called uh, physical address extension instructions thing. Which basically allows you to uh, make the instruction set longer. Or not the instruction set longer, no, excuse me. I meant the address. Yeah, physical address extension, so the address busts longer. And when you set it to XP mode, it doesn't exactly, or XP version, it doesn't exactly do that by default. So you have to go to processor, enable pay and X. And then we'll go ahead and start it up again. Ah, now it's working. And I mean, the address, the address space, and the instruction set are kind of intermingled. But at the same time, though, it's like the address bus isn't exactly the same thing as the instruction set. But that's advanced CPU topics. That's not the topic of this video, is it? And we're waiting for Linux Mint to boot. Oh, hey, look, it actually filled in the entire screen just like we wanted it to. Alright, so from here, we're going to have to go ahead and open up the Longhorn Drive. Just 11 gigabytes, but that's all we really need for it. So we are in here. We're going to go ahead and go find where we put the file at. Now, it's usually recommended to make a backup of your original winlogon.exe out of good practice, so we're going to go ahead and drag this over here, find the uh, Windows Logon thing inside of the System32 folder, which is where it's at. And keep that in mind, C colon backslash Windows backslash System32 is where your winlogon thing is at. Oh, I never mentioned something. Where did I get this winlogon fix? I got it from that, we that website again called longhorn.ms, and... I'll put a link for, to it in the description, but for right now, the, the, the Longhorn.ms is actually a wonderful resource for, for a bunch of things Longhorn. 
run by this guy named I I don't know I don't know who exactly runs this and Firefox crashed. Good job, Linux Mint. But for right now that we don't have to worry about that. I'll post a link in the description where to get this one logon.exe patch at. You might have noticed a slight a slight pause there. Yeah, it's because somebody came into the room and I edited that part out. Whatever the case is, yeah. We got the winlogon.exe file here. And as I was going to say, it's actually a good idea to make a backup of your winlogon.exe file, the original one, before you do this because it, it's good practice and because in case something happens, we can always replace it back and get a working system again. But... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, do that real quick once I actually find winlogon.exe. Should be around here somewhere. Winmine.png. Oh, it should be up there, actually. Uh, there it is. Wow, my eyes are focused on winmine.png even though winlogon.exe was above it. Oh, well. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and rename this file to winlogon.back. Or .exe.back. There we go. And it turns it to a recycling bin icon. Whatever the case is, now we can go ahead and apply the patch. Patch has been applied. Now let's restart the virtual machine one more time. And, uh, give me one moment. Quit. I'm going to minimize something real quick. There we go. So, restart. And right here, it's going to stop for some odd reason, but that's okay. We can just go to uh, machine and then reset. It, usually on a clean installation of VirtualBox, it's going to show up, uh, are you sure you want to reset this virtual machine? I uh, clicked, do not remind me, because I know exactly what it does. But if you get that thing, then you'll know. This is the patched version, right? Yeah, this is. Okay. Now, we're going to, now, a good way to uh, tell if, uh, if it's still loading stuff is, is if, uh, if you look at your hard drive thing, it's still flashing green and red, because the VirtualBox is a little hard drive icon down at the bottom right, outside the, outside the virtual machine, and, um, it, it good, that's a good indication to tell you if it's still doing stuff or not, and another good indication is actually to check Task Manager and see what things are still running in the background, though. It seems like the only thing that's running is the system idle process. Longhorn is weird, but what do you expect out of beta software? So this is actually not a good way to tell what's going on in the background. Then I guess if you really want to wait, you can actually be able to wait for like a little Longhorn thing to show up here. Not a Longhorn thing, a uh, Windows update to show up there. Whoopsie. But um, anyway, now that we've got it all patched up and the thing booted up successfully, we can go ahead and throw this away into the recycle bin. So, what's the next thing on our list? Well, the next thing on our list is actually to get in uh, to get internet working properly. So, at least this is optional for those of you who don't want to get internet working. But for those of uh, but for those of you who do, I'm actually going to show you something. Go to computer, and um, you go open up your shared folder. You go ahead and uh, wherever you store your downloads at, I s store wherever. But. In terms of Firefox, I don't know if Chrome works, but I know Firefox works in this, uh, if Firefox, actually the latest Firefox works inside of this beta build of Windows. Actually, this is where the part gets confusing. Is this really beta, alpha, omega software? I'm confused. But whatever the case is, the, the standard version of Firefox works, and um, here's the thing, though. Don't, you're gonna have to look up this thing called the standalone setup, not the uh, stub setup. The difference between stub and standalone is that stub will is actually just a tiny little file that'll just download the rest of it. So if we look over here, here's the stub, and it says 236 kilobytes, while the main setup is actually 41 megabytes. So get the standalone setup and not the stub version. But now that we've got that down, and hey look, stay current with automatic updates, and the keys didn't show up anymore, so now we got the full 180 days. Go to useful files. Now, of course, it's the same one, but I, I prefer to run it from here. Double click. 
and now it's going to install. Now, word of warning, when the installation says cleaning up a little bit of things, it's going to crash. But that's okay. It actually fully installed as it crashed. So we'll click next, standard, next. Use it as a default browser. And here it is. The Firefox installer has encountered a problem and needs to close. Now, before we minimize this, Firefox, Firefox, don't send. And when we run Firefox, you're going to want to not import anything because I don't exactly trust importing from Microsoft Internet Explorer. You can test that if you want, but eh, in development software, don't trust it all that much. And hello. Internet works. The, the reason why I say internet works is because it has the HTTPS link here. This isn't just a local page. And just to double check. And there you go. Google loads. Now, um, the thing is, Google is going to... Well, not Google. Firefox is going to default to Yahoo as its default browser because they don't exactly like Google and the fact that they snoop in on your things and whatnot. But I prefer Google. You can prefer anything you want. Like, frankly, I think DuckDuckGo is a better option for, for Firefox because at least they don't track you, unlike Yahoo. But as for me, I prefer Google. And now that we've set that up, our search functions will be here for Google. Yep, see? It works. It works perfectly. Nazrin Shaw, correct. That's not the right Nazrin. This is the right Nazrin. In fact, why are we even looking up Nazrin? We should look up something a little bit more suiting. Ah, there we go. Now you want to know why this is so? Why this is more suiting? Well, here, take a gander at this, where she's about to stop Marissa, or that witch down there, magician. There you go. Click on Run. You've probably already figured this out already, but Long Horn. Thank you very much, and that concludes part two of taking a look at Windows Longhorn. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at more stuff, things like features and whatnot. Stay tuned for that. And this has been a really long video, hasn't it? Oh well, whatever the case is, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.